If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to help me out with the production of more content for this channel, then please consider supporting me on Patreon, link in the description down below. Hello everybody, this is Seethercord and welcome to a new video for today. A lot of you guys have been asking me, hey Seethercord, hey John, how do you make these videos? How do you edit your videos? How do you record your videos? What supplies do you use? What do I need to buy? What do I need to do to get to where I can start making videos like you do? And I just decided in response to that, I'm just going to make a video pretty much explaining the process I do for making pretty much every one of my videos. So with that out of the way, we can now get started with how to make a Seethercord video. So when it comes to making a Seethercord video, you have to split it into five different aspects, which are supplies, script writing, footage, editing, and uploading. So let's go into the first part of making a Seethercord video, which is supplies. If you wanna make a YouTube video or a YouTube channel, you're going to need supplies and a lot of tech products in order to make legitimate, like high quality YouTube videos. Not saying that my videos are extremely high quality or anything, but if you wanna do YouTube in sort of a professional sense, you have to get a bunch of supplies, be it tech products, you're gonna need microphones, you're gonna need laptops, you're gonna need cameras, you're gonna need all that stuff. That doesn't mean that you have to start off with all this big expensive supplies, but if you wanna get better over time and you wanna look professional over time, you gotta get these products. And it's okay to start off with a few and like work your way up to getting all the other stuff you need. All the basic supplies that I use to make my videos are a laptop, a microphone, a pop filter, a USB splitter, an editing software, a game capturing device, and a photo maker as well as an external hard drive and a pair of headphones. I use a 13 inch early 2014 MacBook Air that has a 1.4 GHZ Intel Core i5 processor. I currently am using Mac OS High Sierra version 10.13.4. The microphone that I use to record the audio portions of my videos is a Blue Yeti microphone. The Blue Yeti microphone goes for around $100, but there's also a slightly lower quality version of the Blue microphone known as the Blue Snowball that goes for around $40 or $50, which is also pretty decent. Another thing I would highly recommend for if you get your microphone is also get a pop filter. The reason why you would need a pop filter is help soften the loud clicking noises that you usually make when you say certain words into a microphone. Most pop filters are really cheap, and you can get one for around $10 on Amazon. If you're curious, I currently use the Dragon Pad USA pop filter. If you're curious for what kind of camera I use, I use a Canon camera to record video, and I also use an Instax Mini 8 camera just to take photos. Now we're going to go on to editing softwares. If you're curious as to what editing software I've used for my channel, back in the earlier stages of my YouTube channel, I used iMovie, which is a very alright video editing software. It's very simple and basic, and it's a good way to start off if you want to get into filmmaking and editing. But now I've moved up to Camtasia Studio 3, and it's a lot better. And even though it costs $100, I think it's a great place to go if you're a college student working in film. I would like to in the future move up to Adobe Premiere Pro because I feel like that's really professional when it comes to filmmaking and editing. You're also going to need a video download site for it if you want to download other videos off the YouTube platform. I would highly recommend clipconverter.cc because that's a really good place to get in both HD and standard definition quality YouTube video downloads. You're going to need a capture card device. I have two personally. I own the Diamond Multimedia VC500 to record standard definition gameplay footage, and I own an Elgato Game Capture HD60 to help me record high definition gameplay footage. I'm also currently in the process trying to get an AV to HDMI converter so that way I can record standard definition games on my Elgato HD60. Another thing I would highly recommend if you are a laptop user instead of a desktop user is to get a multiple USB port outlet. I would recommend Insignia, that's what I have. It helps me have more than just two USB ports on my laptop to use all at once. The final thing you're going to want is a photo editor. If you don't have Photoshop, you can use a website called PicMonkey, that's what I use personally. And that's all the supplies I would pretty much recommend needing if you wanna make videos like I do. Now we're going to move on to the second part of making a see through court video, which is script writing. Now, I usually take some time out of my day when I'm doing my usual daily shtick to find out what I want to make for in terms of talking about a topic, be it for a see through talks video or a furry review slash analysis video or a top 10 video. I just use the day to kind of think in my head like, hey, that would be a good idea for a video. And then when I finally get the time to sit down at my computer, I then write down the subject of what I want to talk about. And I also think of as some general ideas and points I want to make about that topic. Usually I would recommend making bullet points of like the general things you would want to talk about and then adding little mini bullet points for those bullet points of those aspects of what you want to talk about as well. 
And when it finally comes time to record the audio portions of my videos with my Blue Yeti microphone, I would highly recommend to improv what you say and like basically expand on the points you have in your ideas while you make your video. And it's okay if you make mistakes with saying and stuttering things and if you want to repeat the same thing you have to say four or five different times because you can go back in editing and edit out all the mistakes and the stuttering. And now we're going to get into the third part of this video which I already pre-recorded which is the actual editing process which you're going to view right now. Hello everybody, this is Seether Cord, and welcome to a little bit of a tutorial video in a way of my how to make a Seether Cord video video. I am very bad when it comes to making these titles, but <laughs> in reality, um, I'm actually going to be um, showing you guys how to make a Seether Cord video and kind of like give a little bit of a Camtasia 3 tutorial in a way on how to do things like this and such. And I'm pretty much just going to show you guys not like a deep in-depth tutorial about how the whole editing software works and how to make videos. I'm just going to show you how I make my specific videos. And if you ever want to make a video in the style format that I do, if you want to completely rip me off or something, just watch this video and I'll help you out. So first thing you need is an editing, editing software. I use Camtasia Studio 3. Uh, I used to use iMovie for my earlier videos from about a year ago, but then I upgraded to this after paying $100 for it and it's definitely worth it. I would like to move up to other ones like Adobe Premiere and such, but I currently don't have the funding or the computer power enough to get to that. So right now Camtasia Studio 3, it has its issues, but it's pretty good for um, beginning filmmaking, you know. So uh, first thing you're going you're gonna to want to do is you're going to want to get, um, basically you have to have something to talk about. I always, when I do this, I record audio and I have myself a list of all my past audio recordings. Not all of them, but quite a few of them. So let's just scroll down. This is a lot of the past videos I've made. Um, so uh, we're gonna go, let's just pick one out of nowhere. Let's just say the most annoying things that furries do. Oh, that really clickbaity title one. So yes, you have this. I'll just play a little bit of the footage even though I've already made this video. Hello everybody, this is Seether Cordae. So usually after I'm done recording, uh, the, the thing I never really like explain to you guys is that this is all one consecutive recording. I don't, and with a lot of, a lot of editing. So, um, excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. So it's one consecutive recording with a lot of editing towards it. So basically if you listen to this right here. Hello everybody, this is Seether Cord and welcome to another installment of my Seether Talk series here on YouTube. Yeah, my great voice. I'm going to be talking about the absolute mo I need to find a part where I screw up. You kind of see what it could be. And if you look at the title of this video, you can probably... And if you look at the title of this video, it hints as to what it exactly is. And it involves when you message someone. So yeah, if you can hear that, I made a mistake right here. And if you look at the title of this video, you can kind of see what it could be. And it no, it doesn't kind of annoy him. No, it doesn't kind of annoy me. It really annoys me. So what you usually want to do is when after you like record a consecutive, once you get your idea of what you want to talk about, after you're done recording and you make all your mistakes, go in, you just simply right click and you can just split everything. And then you can just get rid of that. And then it sounds better like this. I rarely ever hear any other furry bring up because I feel like most furries tend to do this and it kind of annoys me. No, it doesn't kind of annoy me. It really annoys me. You might want to shorten it also to make sure there's not too much of a pause. If you do it just right to where like there's no pause in between, it's like as if there was no pause at all. Like, listen. Kind of annoys me. No, it doesn't kind of annoy me. It really annoys me. See? Uh, so now that we got basically all the audio stuff out of the way, um, also if there's some like weird background noises, you can go and get some audio effects in. You can like do some noise removal. You can change the pitch if you ever want to. Now, um, let's get into more of an animated perspective. This is something I just recently added into the channel, and those were like the moving Seether Chord animations. So what you would do for these, I have a little folder on my computer entitled Seether Emotes, which I put over here for this video. And this is like a list of 20 different um, templates I can use of drawings of Seether. Of five, of, he has five different arm and body movements, and for each of them, there's... Um, two of them looking towards the viewer and two looking away from the viewer and for for each of those there's one where he's smiling when he's kind of like eh. so yeah so what you're going to do is you just you can i just keep these here i drag them right from here and then if i like want to start doing an animation or so 
I usually tend to connect them to where like he, these like I usually start going from like showing him looking at the camera with this one to then looking away from the camera on the same one. Hey everybody, this is Seether Cord and welcome to another and then if you want to like kind of repeat it so that way it kind of has a little bit of life to it, that'd be pretty cool too. Hello everybody, this is Seether Cord and welcome to another installment of my Seether Talk series here on YouTube. Now if you don't want to um you don't want to just put it straight in the center here if it's kind of off or if you want to move it anywhere you want, what you'll want to do, instead of just having the individually click one and like drag and expand it, what you can do, or what I usually do is once I'm like Let's just say I do this, like I get like hundreds or 10 million or so of these. Um, I just keep them all where they are right now while I'm making the video. And then at the very end, I go and expand all of it. I know these are kind of uneven right now, but I fix that usually. And only for like certain ones, I go back and I like change those. Like, and then if I want to go and put this exact one and just like make it all crazy and spin around like, woo, okay. Then I would do that, like go all, woo. So yeah, like that. Today's episode of Seether Talks, we are going to be talking about the absolute most number one, most annoying thing. So yeah, so that's pretty much all for that aspect of it. Um, now we're going to get into more of the other side things I can do. Okay, I just realized I forgot to add in my Patreon intro and my usual typical intro, so... You can put and those in channel, here. Then please consider supporting me on Patreon. Link in the description down below. And I usually have the choice between... Um, I have two different styles in the intro. One where it's kind of like a rainbow, kind of like vibrant background. And then one where it's just a still one color changing image background. So you can select either one you choose or so. That's what I usually do. And also when I come to this like static transition, a little uh, shortcut I like to do. Is that when you have this little static seam right here you split it playhead and then if you do uh, command C which is command copy and then command V which is command paste you go right here when you're done making your video or when you're ready to transition to the next scene you just paste that right here so as you can see there we go and then you go and put in your outro and everything and then boom check a log of boom that's it so that's pretty much all of the core things I tend to usually do when it comes to editing my videos. I pretty much do all this plus a little bit of extra from time to time. But pretty much every video that I do make has these aspects that I just showed you and I just work on them continuously for a couple of hours each day. There are some other things in Camtasia that I could show you, but there's already tons of tutorials on YouTube of Camtasia that have already been out there that you can easily look out and people can explain a lot better than me. But I'm just showing you guys how I make my own videos straight up. So. That's all for this, so thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next part of this video, so goodbye. Now we're gonna get into the final part of my videos, which is the uploading process. I don't have a set schedule weekly of how many videos I'm gonna upload a week or what day of the week I'm gonna upload. I usually always upload when I get a video finished and I always make sure to upload it at 7 p.m. Central Time Zone because that's what I'm always used to uploading at and I wanna make sure that people get notified to watch my videos at the usual time they're used to. I usually go in and I schedule it for exactly the time I need to and then I add in all my tags, my descriptions, the links to all the channels I want. I also list all the Patreon supporters who supported me. I put in the description. I make sure to mark it for Google Plus and Twitter. And then I finally go into PicMonkey and then I make the thumbnail and design it the way I want to. And when I finally finish making the thumbnail, I put it in the uploading page and then I'm ready to schedule the video and it's all good to go. And when the video is fully uploaded and scheduled to be viewed to the public in a little bit, I always make sure before the video goes public to go and add the end cards to the video as well. Putting in my Seethercord Games gaming channel, my Patreon support page, my subscribe button, and also a playlist to my other videos. So that's all the steps that pretty much come into making a Seethercord video. If you guys enjoy this video and want to further help out my channel, please consider donating to my Patreon page, hitting that like button, turning on that notification bell, and subscribing altogether. I've been Seethercord and I will see you guys next time. So, goodbye everyone. We have the stereotypical Japanese ninja warrior enemies. The reason why I call it the cultural appropriation land is because people are going to say, Oh, this is racist, even though this was made by the same people.